For those of you who are subscribed to my channel, the name Daniel Larson is likely familiar to you. His story is a harsh one, delving into the dark intersection of social media and mental illness. It's a narrative that traces the transformation of an innocent child into a monstrous figure, stripped of everything and everyone. I previously covered Daniel's life in a comprehensive documentary on my channel, which not only became my most popular video by a wide margin, but also stands as one of the most thorough accounts of his tumultuous journey available on the internet. Initially, I hesitated to create a direct sequel to my original Daniel video for various reasons. I wanted to wait for the right moment to revisit his timeline and pick up where I left off. However, in the mere three months since the release of my documentary, a whirlwind of events has unfolded in Daniel's life. New significant figures have emerged, intricately weaving themselves into the fabric of his story. Driven by an insatiable thirst for love and fame, Daniel embarked on a journey across the United States, finding himself entangled in shocking, disturbing, and absurd situations. In this second installment of my documentary, we will once again immerse ourselves in Daniel's world, exploring his recent escapades and turbulent travels as he transverses the nation. Brace yourself for encounters with adversaries and unexpected alliances. Before we dive into the depths of Daniel's current narrative, I want to remind you, the viewer, that this video is a direct continuation of my previous Daniel video, The Daniel Larson Documentary. If you have not watched it or are not up to date with the events in Daniel's life as of March 2023, I highly recommend you watch it to familiarize yourself with the context. Many of the events in this video require a solid understanding of the preceding events, so it's essential to catch up before delving into this installment. Furthermore, I must provide a warning. The contents of this documentary will contain extremely sensitive and disturbing material. If you are sensitive to any of the listed topics displayed on the screen, this video, along with my previous one, may not be suitable for you. Viewer discretion is advised. With that being said, I am Kusari, and welcome to the Daniel Larson Documentary, Part 2. missing and supposedly he's in the hospital as someone said they worked near the Las Vegas Strip and saw an ambulance take a man who looks like Daniel. I wonder what will be the end of this whole thing. Okay, hello everyone. I am okay. I was in another attack. I will try to keep everyone updated. Stay tuned. Hello everyone. So I have made it to Tucson and to get ready to head to El Paso, Texas. And apparently, he's trying to take a trip all the way to New York City. And he's gonna make it there by hook or by crook, by begging for it, or by sneaking on to the wrong bus. This is a shout out to Joshua World for t-shirts. I still am waiting for the boxing match. We'll have that in 2023.
The last time we visited Daniel, he had been arrested on the night of March 1st for trespassing at a casino. Multiple Redditors reached out to casino security and the LVMPD confirming the incident. Afterward, Daniel completely disappeared from the grid, staying away from social media until March 14th, the same day I released the Daniel Larson documentary. On that eventful day, Daniel Larson made several claims about an alleged attack that had occurred, echoing a previous incident when he went off the radar. He boldly stated that he had been lifetime banned from the strategy Sphere Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas as a result of this assault. Shortly after, Daniel re-emerged on TikTok, resuming his online presence under the account name Daniel Larson NYC. He opened up to his followers, sharing that he had spent time at a mental health hospital in Las Vegas while seeking treatment and support. Meanwhile, on my YouTube channel, I unveiled the Daniel Larson documentary. This two and a half hour long video delved deep into the life and history of Daniel Larson. In the lead up to its release, the documentary was promoted on the Daniel Larson and subreddits generating a considerable amount of anticipation. Within just one day, the documentary garnered 1.1k views, and since then it has amassed nearly 600,000 views as of July 2023, solidifying its status as one of the most watched videos about Daniel on YouTube. While the documentary generally received positive feedback, one commenter stood out for expressing a more critical perspective. Ox, known as Ivan, voiced concerns about the video's lack of context regarding significant events, such as the nuke prank livestream and the December 10th incident. Ox disputed the claim made in the documentary that Daniel broke a TV after the nuke prank, clarifying instead that Daniel had a meltdown later that night, resulting in damage to a TV, which Daniel supposedly reimbursed. Which, to be honest, just kind of sounds like a very sugar-coated way of saying, yeah, Daniel broke a TV, but, you know, at least he covered it. But that's besides the point. Within the comments section, Ox passionately defended himself against accusations and provided additional details surrounding the December 10th incident. He revealed that on that fateful day, Daniel and Bob engaged in a relentless prank war with trolls, even resorting to using spoofed phone numbers. As tensions escalated, trolls decided to take their pranks a step further by spoofing the hotel's number and bombarding Daniel with threatening calls. This triggered a massive freakout from Daniel. Ox emphasized that Bob had already been on edge due to receiving death threats from Daniel's core trolls throughout the month. Frustrated and genuinely concerned for their safety, Bob insisted that Daniel leave, ultimately leading to the sequence of events that followed. Ox's comments shed light on the intricate dynamics and the series of events that unfolded during these tumultuous times. They added a new layer of understanding to the narrative, providing the audience with further context and revealing the extent of the challenges and pressures faced by both Daniel and those who were intertwined in his life. Following his discharge from the Sunrise Medical Center, Daniel shared his experiences there on March 15th. He claimed that the medical staff informed him that he was not mentally ill enough to be held permanently in a mental health facility. Furthermore, he mentioned that his doctor had labeled his diagnosis as unknown psychosis. These revelations shed light on the complexities surrounding Daniel's mental health and the hurdles he encountered in receiving appropriate care. The next day, Daniel uploaded a video revealing physical pain. Concerned, a stranger approached him inquiring about his well-being. Daniel attributed his injury to accidentally walking into an object, although he never explicitly confirmed what that object was. Later in the video, he turned the camera around, showcasing a metal railing in front of him. It is plausible that this was the object he collided with, although the exact circumstances remain unclear. Amidst these events, Daniel posted a fabricated screenshot of his bank account balance on the 16th, displaying an astonishing figure of negative $755,000. This provocative image further heightened curiosity around Daniel's financial situation, leaving many questioning the authenticity of his claims. Additionally, Daniel faced an unexpected setback during one of his live streams. While seeking refuge at the Tropicana Hotel to charge his phone, he was asked to leave by a staff member who informed him that the charging facility was exclusively for hotel guests. On the 17th, Daniel decided to go live on TikTok, oblivious to the distressing events that would soon transpire. During the live stream, he began receiving threatening and harassing text messages, including death threats. In an extraordinary and somewhat disconcerting display, Daniel read each message aloud, providing an unfiltered glimpse into the disturbing nature of the content he was receiving. The messages ranged from ominous statements like, I have a gun, I am following you, I am going to buy you dinner, to claims that a photograph of Daniel had been taken mere moments ago. Throughout the live stream, Daniel's reactions varied from anxiously glancing over his shoulder to abrupt running away after receiving a message that chillingly stated, I am behind you. Notably, Daniel appeared to have a runny nose throughout the live stream and repeatedly
repeatedly attempting to address it by licking away the mucus. As a consequence of this distressing incident, Daniel's live privileges on TikTok were revoked for a week. It seemed that his decision to read the inappropriate messages aloud was what resulted in this suspension. Concluding the live stream, Daniel made it clear in a TikTok video that he did not possess a phone number at the moment and was solely relying on his iPad Touch for communication. This revelation underscored the limitations he faced during this period. Continuing on his journey, Daniel shared multiple TikTok videos the following day, documenting his bus travels. These visuals served as tangible proof of his earlier claim that he had purchased a bus ticket and was en route to his next destination. The footage captured moments of his departure from Las Vegas, symbolizing a significant shift in the ongoing narrative. Throughout the day, Daniel diligently kept his followers updated throughout the community section of his YouTube page. Responding to a comment inquiring about his future plans, he revealed that he would be staying in Phoenix, Arizona for a few hours before heading to his next destination, New Orleans. Looking ahead, Daniel disclosed on the community section of his YouTube page that his next move would involve taking a bus to Tucson, Arizona. The unfolding events continued to captivate the attention of his audience, who remained eager to witness the next phase of Daniel's ongoing journey. After embarking on a bus journey from Las Vegas, Nevada, Daniel Larson reached Phoenix, Arizona on the 18th of March. In his first video following his arrival, Daniel expressed gratitude to his viewers by giving Cash App shoutouts to those who had donated to him. Throughout the day, he continued to upload videos acknowledging donations, including one where he thanked a contributor named Ariana Grande for a generous $70 donation. Alongside these shoutouts, Daniel showcased his creative side through a series of rap videos that reflected his new surroundings. His lyrics contained whimsical references such as, I stand up here next to the Sphinx, and I can't wait to taste the cat in the witch's brew. Yeah, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, bro. You know my name. I stand up here next to the Sphinx. Yeah, that stinks, but you know, when I am king, I'm gonna be stand- Yeah, I'm the monkey, I'm the Sphinx. Yeah, it stinks. When I'm standing up here next to the Sphinx, but yeah, I am the king. You know my name? It's Daniel motherfucking Lars. I'm holding my broomstick and I'm standing next to the witch. In another video, he revealed that he had decided to stop taking Latuda, a medication commonly prescribed for schizophrenia, citing blurred speech and increased confusion as the reasons behind his choice. In a subsequent video, Daniel expressed his need for an additional $20 before he could proceed to Tucson, Arizona. Later in the day, he posted another video where he appeared to be inside a train, monorail, or subway, although he did not clarify the mode of transportation or its destination. The footage indicated nighttime surroundings, suggesting he was still in Phoenix, Arizona at the time. Simultaneously, Daniel updated his YouTube community tab at Daniel Larson NYC, sharing that he had just booked a bus ticket to Tucson for the following morning. In response to a comment questioning his plans in Tucson, he simply stated, transfer. Another comment suggested he had initially planned to go to New York, to which Daniel replied, I am. In a subsequent community post, he announced that after Tucson, his next stop would be Houston, Texas. On March 19th, Daniel arrived in Tucson, Arizona, having taken a bus from Phoenix earlier that morning. Similar to his brief stay in Phoenix, he had no intention of remaining in Tucson for long and indicated that he would be traveling onward to El Paso, Texas. As the day progressed, he uploaded a series of videos indulging in cookies and cream ice cream, playfully endorsing its delectable taste. In one video, he exclaimed, these are amazing. If you haven't tried them, you should. Another video showcased him smeared with white ice cream across his lips and face, prompting him to humorously remark, oh my God, with all this cookie dough, it's so messy. I literally look like I did something naughty. Good God, dude. Oh my God. During his time in Tucson, Daniel engaged with various strangers, presumably some of whom were his viewers. 
He captured these interactions through numerous selfies showcasing the connections he was building. Just a few hours after posting the first selfie with these individuals, Daniel shared a video in which he joyfully danced alongside five young men, seemingly fans of his. Several strangers also approached Daniel and gifted him items, seemingly out of kindness alone. While the acts of generosity were not recorded, Daniel featured the conversations he had with these strangers, discussing his needs regarding food and toiletries. Although the specific purchases were not shown, it can be inferred that they took place off camera. Notably, an anonymous fan even gifted Daniel Daniel a tent, which he proceeded to carry with him. March 21st saw Daniel posting a video of himself walking alongside a road, offering updates on recent events. In the video, he disclosed, I'm currently in Arizona, in a small town. Can't say the name of the town, mainly for safety. I was going to go to El Paso, but I'm going to have to cancel that. Yesterday, I was receiving death threats over going to El Paso, so I'm not going to El Paso until I can get security. While Daniel chose not to disclose the town's name, observant users on the subreddit were able to identify his location based on a previous video in which he visited a veteran's memorial. Using Google Maps, subreddit members determined that the memorial was situated in Benson, Arizona, approximately 50 miles southeast of Tucson. Daniel proceeded to upload more videos as he strolled through Benson. However, due to windy conditions, the audio quality was compromised, making it challenging to grasp all the details he shared. On the early morning of March 22nd, Daniel Larson found himself in a parking garage, realizing that he had boarded the wrong bus. Instead of reaching his intended destination of Roswell, New Mexico, he ended up in El Paso, Texas, his original destination. In a video he posted, Daniel shared the details of this unexpected turn of events with his viewers. During his time in El Paso, one noteworthy incident involved an individual referred to by Daniel as C. Daniel took to his YouTube community page to express concerns about this person, who he claimed was threatening him. He posted cryptic messages like, C, stop texting me, and C, stop messaging me or I will fix you and your family on TikTok to the FBI and tell the fans to press charges. Jesus Christ. The identity of C remained a mystery, with Daniel only referring to them as a troll when asked in a comment. Another incident took place while Daniel was inside a restaurant in El Paso. Initially, he appeared to be in good spirits, thanking his donors and announcing his upcoming music album. However, he suddenly posted a video stating that he was dealing with the police. According to Daniel, someone had called the police to the restaurant, an act he attributed to a troll. Aware of his past reputation for leaving without paying, Daniel emphasized that his tab was fully settled. In a subsequent video, he mentioned that the police had released him without any issues and even left a $50 tip as a gesture of gratitude. The following morning, Daniel uploaded a video from inside a tent, presumably the same tent he had been given in Tucson, where he had already spent the night. In the video, he mentioned needing new shoes and revealed his worn-out pair. Later, he posted another video capturing his boarding of a bus. On March 23rd, Daniel was spotted in downtown San Jacinto Plaza Park near a J.P. Morgan Chase Bank in El Paso, Texas. He was seen making his way to the nearest bus station around 12.30 p.m. MST. From there, he boarded a bus to Big Spring, Texas. Upon reaching Big Spring on March 24th, Daniel claimed to have lost his debit card early in the day. He spent the rest of the day searching for it. On March 25th, Daniel uploaded a video announcing that he had found his debit card but discovered it was no longer working. In an unusual move, Daniel posted a picture on his YouTube community page showing a random man sleeping with the caption, Tell this guy to stop stalking me, likely as the result of the schizophrenic episode. Around 11 o'clock p.m. on the same day, Daniel uploaded several videos on his YouTube community page regarding an emergency. The emergency referred to the influx of comments from trolls he was receiving. Daniel claimed to be in communication with Ivan, which resulted in a heated argument where Daniel accused Ivan of being delusional and not in contact with Tina Vanderwall. Daniel later alleged that Ivan was holding Grace Vanderwall at gunpoint, a claim echoed by someone who identified themselves as Grace in a subsequent video. In response, Daniel stated that he would contact the police. He also mentioned receiving cease and desist letters from LBI Records and Columbia Records, citing his past employment with these companies. Over the course of an hour, Daniel posted 47 videos discussing the above events, including his association with Grace and Tina Vanderwall. Vanderwall, the status of a restraining order filed against him, and his alleged termination by an unknown employer. On March 26th, Daniel posted multiple videos showcasing his breakfast, which consisted of nacho cheese chips and an energy drink. He also claimed that donations from Gus Fring did not go through. In an update on his
his YouTube community page, Daniel mentioned being caught up in another crisis. He described communicating with Grace, who allegedly tried to force him to disclose his social media passwords and eventually resorted to threatening physical violence. In a YouTube community comment, Daniel stated that his debit card was working again, but noted a discrepancy of around $60 in his bank account. He later announced his plan to go out for lunch and shared multiple videos of a dog, expressing concern that it might attack him. Out of paranoia, Daniel declared that he would fucking murder that dog if it attempted to bite him. He further uploaded a video featuring a company car, inadvertently revealing his location to fans. Feeling that his location had been compromised again, Daniel announced that he would not stay there much longer. Shortly after, Daniel uploaded a video with someone off-camera holding a phone. The video captured a phone conversation with a person claiming to be from MGM security who had allegedly kicked Daniel out. Daniel inquired about the reason for his removal, to which the supposed security figure accused him of having scabies, being a pedophile, and having an interest in children. Daniel vehemently denied these allegations, stating that legal action had been taken and that his social media accounts were hacked in 2021. He claimed to have won a court case related to the matter. The caller then requested a $10 donation from Daniel, but he explained that his management handled his finances. When asked if he would take a picture for $5, Daniel declined. The video abruptly transitioned to Daniel sprinting towards the restaurant's front door, where he filmed the red pickup truck, the same vehicle the person on the phone had allegedly entered. Four hours later, Daniel uploaded another video claiming to have taken a bus and arrived in Wichita, Kansas. However, this claim was impossible since the journey from Big Spring to Wichita takes around 17 hours. Later that day, Daniel made numerous posts on TikTok and YouTube, alleging that he had been stalked by a white pickup truck for several hours. In the videos, Walmart signs were visible in the background. Daniel also mentioned that some of his fans were calling the Big Spring Walmart to have him expelled. Additionally, he claimed that an unknown fan was waiting outside with a gun. Daniel decided to document his adventures in the big city by going live on TikTok. He started the live stream by hiding behind a shopping cart in a Walmart parking lot, claiming that the white pickup truck was waiting for him. He informed the viewers that he had notified the store's security about the situation. According to Daniel, the truck's owner had strategically parked to maintain a clear view of the parking lot. He also recounted an incident before the live stream where he tried to leave the store but felt that the white pickup truck was following him, prompting him to return inside. During the live stream, an employee confirmed that they had checked the parking lot and found no sign of a white pickup truck. Daniel then left the store and showed the empty parking lot as quote-unquote evidence. Although the white pickup truck was nowhere to be seen, a black pickup truck drove past Daniel and parked in front of the store, raising his suspicions. Fueled by paranoia, Daniel took cover behind a vending machine. Eventually, he decided to escape a nearby gas station and sprinted across the parking lot, claiming that a white car was trying to catch up to him. Seeking safety, Daniel entered the gas station and asked the cashier to call the police, explaining that he was being stalked and receiving death threats through the livestream chat. Another employee offered to make the call on his behalf. As they waited the arrival of police, Daniel shared details of his internet fame and discussed his alleged stalkers. When he described the vehicles involved, he and the cashier ventured outside to search for them. However, they concluded that the parking lot was clear. Daniel returned to the store and continued observing for the black pickup truck. Eventually, he claimed that the white car had returned and showed it to an employee. The employees, having already done their best to assist him, asked Daniel to leave the store, and he complied. Outside, multiple customers and employees assured him that he was safe. For the remainder of the live stream, Daniel walked along random streets, delivering motivational speeches. He spoke about his autism, family history, similarities to Donald Trump, and his fan base. Daniel also acknowledged his past mistakes, including doxing people, and mentioned the Pinterest board incident, insisting that he had been hacked. Throughout his monologue, Daniel trespassed on the Edge's properties, prompting a dog to bark at him in one instance. Startled, Daniel yelled at the dog and quickly crossed the street, narrowly avoiding being hit by a car. During the live stream, Daniel sporadically started running, claiming to have seen or heard something suspicious each time. At one point, he entered a Whataburger and asked if he could use an outlet to call an Uber. Shortly after, he abruptly ended the live stream. The live stream was subsequently uploaded to YouTube by a user named Acid Gat. On the night of March 27th, around 1 a.m., Daniel went live on TikTok once again, documenting his journey through the city streets. Reflecting on his previous safety concerns, Daniel engaged with local business owners who assured him that the supposed gunshots he had heard were simply the sounds of passing cars and 4th of July fireworks. It took a few minutes for Daniel to realize that it was actually March and not July. Continuing his walk, Daniel remarked on the high number of police officers in the vicinity 
vicinity, capturing their presence as they drove by. At one point, he jogged over a bridge, adding a sense of adventure to his stream. Later, Daniel mentioned that his Uber app was not working, so he decided to walk back to the gas station he had visited earlier. As he strolled along a street, he suddenly noticed a police car executing a U-turn towards his direction. Daniel believed that the officers were specifically watching him, leading him to film their actions. Eventually, one of the officers approached Daniel, and he documented their interaction on camera. The officer informed Daniel that the police station had received multiple phone calls about him, piquing their interest. In response, Daniel eagerly shared details about his status as a celebrity on TikTok. The officer, having heard the calls and looked into Daniel's online presence, expressed his curiosity and decided to find him. Reassuringly, the officer emphasized that Daniel was not under arrest and was free to leave at any time. The encounter turned out to be surprisingly positive, and after bidding farewell to the officer, Daniel announced his intention to return to the gas station to charge his phone and call an Uber. Shortly before arriving at the gas station, Daniel concluded the live stream. However, almost immediately after the stream ended, the location of the gas station where Daniel had sought refuge was posted on Reddit. In response, Daniel made several posts urging his fans to stop calling the gas station. Unfortunately, the gas station staff was inundated with a barrage of calls from fans, some intending to inform the staff about Daniel's reputation and presence, while others simply wanted to speak to him. It was reported that one person managed to get through to Daniel, but the conversation abruptly ended when Daniel became upset at being addressed as Danny Boy in Danderson. Eventually, the overwhelmed gas station employees stopped answering the phone. Later that same day, an account claiming to be Tina Vanderwall left multiple comments on Daniel's YouTube community page, triggering a breakdown for him. In an attempt to regain control, Daniel uploaded several videos featuring a conversation he had with a fan at a gas station. Grateful for the gesture, the fan had bought Daniel a Four loco drink. However, this act of kindness coincided with an unfortunate turn of events. Daniel declared that his location had been leaked, resulting in a flood of phone calls directed towards the gas station. To further complicate matters, Daniel shared a screenshot revealing his email address, asserting that both his YouTube page and email had been compromised and hacked. Fleeing from the mounting turmoil, Daniel boarded a bus and departed from Big Spring, leaving behind a string of perplexing incidents. On March 28th, Daniel arrived in Sweetwater, Texas, after a 20-minute Greyhound bus ride. Stepping off at the first stop, he noticed a white pickup truck parked at the station, which immediately raised concerns for his safety. Cautious of the potential threat, Daniel decided to stay at the station for a while. Unfortunately, some individuals managed to identify his location by spotting the business name in the background of one of his videos. These trolls went to great lengths to get Daniel kicked out, even resorting to calling the police. However, their efforts proved unsuccessful as Daniel remained undeterred. To make ends meet, he accepted an offer to mop up the bathrooms at the truck stop for $20. Later that day, in a TikTok upload, Daniel excitedly announced a collaboration with Playboy Cardi, a well-known rapper from Atlanta. With his plans set, Daniel left Sweetwater in the evening and headed towards San Antonio. Arriving in San Antonio on March 29th, Daniel Daniel decided to go live on TikTok while sleeping at the Greyhound station. However, his rest was abruptly interrupted by an employee who woke him up and asked him to leave the premises. It turned out that the station had received numerous calls about Daniel's presence, prompting them to take action. Daniel? Daniel? Yes. Okay, were you in here last night? I was. Okay, and um, then the cops actually took you out of here, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so why don't we back over here? I'm waiting for Greyhound. Okay, all right. So here's what I need you to do. You can wait off the premises for Greyhound to show up because you'll be able to see the bus and stuff okay. like that. I can't continue having phone calls, people calling and prank calling and stuff, whatever's going on. I have no earthly idea and stuff, but I need you off the property. Okay. Okay. I will do that. Okay? All right. Thank you. I get treated like motherfucking shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. This place is still getting harassed. And I just got a phone call. Okay. I just uh, got a phone call here. Okay. Well, that's my life. Well, that's my life. <laughs> Later that day, Daniel arrived in Houston. However, the morning of March 30th brought an argument between Daniel and the employees and security at the Greyhound bus station. The dispute revolved around a bus ticket transfer as Daniel did not have a ticket for any of the buses. The employees insisted that he leave the station, but Daniel refused, even challenging them to call the police. In the midst of this confrontation, Daniel claimed to have called the police himself, citing threats on his life as the reason. He deleted it when I came in here. I'm not going to I'm not going to leave. You guys can call the police. Because I when I came in here on the bus when I came in here, 
I was going to do the bus transfer, okay? So then I'm leaving here at 12. I'm not going to leave because I'm, I'm going to be leaving on the bus. Sir, you have to leave you have a ticket, sir. Okay, call the fucking police. I'm not playing games. I did not. No, I didn't. I called the police because somebody was threatening to kill me. So I had to protect myself. But I said that I was going to go get the bus ticket and I was going to leave here at 12. Give me a fucking break. Eventually, Daniel found himself at a restaurant in downtown Houston, seeking some respite. He asked for Cash App donations on TikTok, requesting one dollar from his followers. However, trolls managed to track him down once again, bombarding the restaurant with phone calls and ultimately leading to Daniel being asked to leave. Despite the chaos, Daniel refused to comply and the police were called to intervene. A TikTok video captured the interaction between Daniel and two Houston PD officers, where he explained the ongoing doxing and trolling situation. The officer collected Daniel's information and inquired about his travel plans and occupation. Daniel described himself, as usual, as a multi-talented singer and songwriter on a business trip, mentioning his upcoming visit to Florida before heading to New York City. The topic of doxing was discussed, with Daniel revealing that someone had made it their mission to get him banned from every establishment he visited. The encounter with the police remained civil, and Daniel was advised to explore other restaurants east of downtown Houston. He was escorted off the property with a warning not to return. Seeking refuge, Daniel made his way to the Sodo on Main Apartment Complex in Houston. In a twist of events, he entered a restaurant called Mademoiselle Louise in the south tower of the complex. However, the familiar pattern repeated itself with trolls discovering his location and prompting the restaurant employees to ask him to leave. Daniel, determined to stay, refused their request, leading to another call to the police. A TikTok video captured a heated argument between Daniel and two Houston Police Department officers. The situation the situation escalated with Daniel shouting slurs towards the officers, who eventually walked away and rode off on their bicycles. Angered by their response, Daniel followed their path, engaging in a confrontational exchange. I'm, I'm not debating, I just have like a serious question that I do need to ask, okay? Go ahead. So recently, I gained a bunch of popularity. All right, we're done here. So yeah, we're, we don't have time for that. Okay, guys. but can you leave? Somebody has Thank been you. doxing my vote. Somebody, okay. Phone into the police department that you guys are not cooperating. Call fucking dispatch. Call fucking dispatch. No, no. Go call the police. We have to come back as criminal trust man. Okay, you're putting me in physical danger! <laughs> BITCH! I told you that I was getting doxxed! Exhausted from the events of the day, Daniel found himself standing on the corner of the Soto on Main Apartments. In one of his final TikToks on March 30th, he discussed his intention to press charges against both the police department and his trolls. He claimed that the police had labeled him as acting crazy on social media. It remains unclear whether Daniel was arrested, detained, released, or left the property before police arrived. However, the TikToks depicting this incident with the police were deleted, leaving the exact details of the aftermath unknown. Daniel's new managers, including the user named I Wish I Had a Dad, played a crucial role in assisting him with purchasing a plane ticket to New York City. His main motivation for this adventure was to meet up with Tina and Grace Vanderwall, who had apparently requested his presence for an investigation. Moreover, Daniel had expressed a desire to meet Grace in person. As news of Daniel's flight spread, there was some confusion regarding the exact date. Although Daniel initially stated that his flight would take place on April 4th, the community inferred that it would happen on the 3rd. This deliberate ambiguity was Daniel's attempt to throw off the trolls. Eventually on April 3rd at around 2pm, Daniel was believed to have passed through airport security. 
His flight included a transfer at the Charlotte Airport in North Carolina, and its final destination was Newark, New Jersey. From there, Daniel planned to take a train from Penn Station to New York City. At 7.57 p.m. on April 3rd, Daniel shared what appeared to be photos of himself inside of an airplane on the Discord server called Daniel Larson HQ. However, the authenticity of these photos came into question. Around noon on April 4th, Daniel uploaded multiple videos confirming his arrival in New York. Although it's unclear if he meant to say Newark, he proceeded to post several videos discussing the leak of his phone number and location. He made an unsupported claim that the fire alarms were pulled at the airport as a part of an attack, though it remained uncertain whether he believed it was directed specifically at him. Daniel continued to upload videos from a subway or train car where he could be seen punching and kicking his surroundings while expressing distress over his doxing situation. Stop! You guys are fucking scaring me! Stop! Stop! You guys are fucking scary. Later, a fan posted a TikTok video showing Daniel in their car with the caption, IN THE BIG APPLE, in all caps. DANIEL LARSON IS IN NEW YORK! <laughs> Daniel's presence in New York City did not go unnoticed by his fans, who eagerly tracked his movements and shared his whereabouts. Around 6 p.m. EST on April 4th, Daniel was spotted at Exchange Place in Jersey City. He boarded a train to the World Trade Center and later disclosed his location, Beats Karaoke in Brooklyn. Throughout April 5th, Daniel was continuously spotted and doxxed all over New York City. While some individuals had genuine intentions and wanted to meet him, paying for his meals, offering gifts, and even providing a room for him to sleep on the 4th through the 5th, others sought to exploit his vulnerability. On the night of the 5th, the Bodega incident occurred. Before the incident, a Reddit user named u slash Zuckmonkey posted multiple videos of himself harassing Daniel, starting at a restaurant. According to Daniel, these teenagers had sent him death threats at various locations before showing up at a bodega. The fans repeatedly asked Daniel if he smoked crack and if he knew who they were. They deceitfully claimed to be his friends, escalating Daniel's agitation. Throughout the videos, Daniel mentioned an unspecified security force. The fans continued to follow Daniel inside the store, taunting him by calling his name from different aisles and engaging in other provocative actions until he became visibly upset and eventually called the police. This is where the video call capturing most of the incident began. Alright, dude, I was just in there and I bought something, so he might like freak out. Alright, boss. I asked you to leave. I asked you to leave. We're on the phone with no, I don't. I'm on the phone with my security. No, I'm not. Stop lying. Get out of here before I call the police. What? Who? The one of the guys that was sending death threats on Reddit. Daniel. I've asked you to leave. We're on the phone with the police. Daniel. I've asked you to Come leave. on, Daniel. You know me. No, I don't. You do? We're no, friends. I don't. I'm on the phone with my security. Are you smoking crack or tweak? No, I'm not. That's the story. I'm famous, and I don't know any of these people. And they're impersonating my security. And they're following me around the entire block. Damn. The restaurant. Are you smoking crack or tweak? I'm going to have to ask you to leave. If you do not leave, I'm calling the police. On the same night, user u slash cybercrimer uploaded a recording of a private Discord call involving Daniel, his management, and someone impersonating Olivia Vanderwall to Reddit. The call took place on a private Discord server, the same one mentioned earlier as Daniel Larson HQ, which served as a communication channel for his so-called managers and the fake Olivia Vanderwall. During the call, Daniel was seen being kicked out of Little India Bodega by an employee for recording in the store and causing a disturbance. Furthermore, the individuals on the call goaded Daniel to spit on the employee and show them his camera. Consumed by rage, Daniel charged at the man and punched him. In response, the employee punched Daniel in the eye and pushed him to the ground. Daniel yelled, but the shaky and obscured camera failed to capture the actual assaults. I've already punched the security guard. You already punched him? Yeah, I did. Because he put hands on me. And I told him that I'm a celebrity and you're clearly putting me in danger. Right yes, the, right the police are on their way. I'm not gonna do that. I have you on get film. Out. I have get you out. on film. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. I have you on film, bitch. I have you on film, bitch. Police <laughs> told me to wait in there, bitch. 
Daniel, defend yourself. Daniel, get back at him. We fucking police! They told me to wait in there! No, because you hit me! You hit me in there! Fuck you, bitch! You hit me in there! Don't go to somebody else to fit myself! When Daniel turned the camera back on, he screamed about his injuries, claiming that his knee and eye were bleeding after being pushed to the ground. Despite the pleas from his managers and the fake Olivia Vanderwall to leave the bodega, Daniel refused to comply, stating his intention to press charges against both the employee and the five teenagers who had been following him. Daniel mentioned that he was waiting outside the bodega for the police and EMS, as he did not emerge from the situation unharmed, which was a rarity in his previous incidents. He expressed the need for paramedics due to the black eye he sustained during the altercation. Later, a picture of his black eye was uploaded to Reddit by user u slash Tanyupani. About an hour after the incident, Daniel revealed that he was still waiting for EMS, concerned that he might have suffered a concussion during the altercation. Subsequently, it was reported that Daniel had checked out of the hospital. While in the emergency room, he underwent a screening for a concussion which turned out negative, and no serious injuries were reported. Later that night, Daniel uploaded another video from the hospital, although it was unclear whether it was from his initial visit or if he returned. The video showed his black eye. In the footage, Daniel claims that he had been attacked by two fans in New York City in 2023, but he assured his viewers that he had no fractures and only had a sizable cut on his nose. While staying in the hospital, Daniel had a large gauze bandage on his nose. However, in his TikTok videos where he toured the 9-11 memorial and other attractions, he did not have the bandage on. During Daniel's time in New York, his fans urged him in World of T-Shirts to meet up. But before we delve into the roles of World of T-Shirts and Michael Quinn in Daniel's story, I think it's time we take a closer look at who these two individuals are. Joshua Block, known as World of T-Shirts on social media, rose to fame on TikTok in October 2020. Most of his posts revolved around his life in New York City, becoming closely associated with the city. I run this city now! Me! Me! This is my city! New York is my city! Yeah! Yeah! In New York! Concrete jungle where dreams are made of! Now you're in New York! Josh even went as far as paying for a billboard in Times Square featuring his dancing and TikTok handle in May 2021. Like Daniel, he became a subject of online discussions and was referred to as an AIOPM or a TikTok lolcow. In recent months, concerns arose about Block's potential struggles with alcoholism as his videos often feature drinking and displays of intoxication. In 2022, he teamed up with fellow TikToker Michael Quinn, who acted as Josh's mentor and helped him establish his NYC tour business. Interestingly, in 2023, Daniel Larson and World of T-Shirts found themselves entangled in a virtual beef, instigated by fans who wanted to see a clash between these two notable figures of TikTok, both coincidentally present in New York City. Fans eagerly attempted to lure Daniel to Josh's location, debating on who would win in a hypothetical fight between the two. Some fans even convinced Daniel to visit Michael Quinn's apartment, sparking a hostile atmosphere between Joshua, Michael, and Daniel. He shouldn't be just showing up in my apartment. He walked, like, walked in like <laughs> That's crazy. And like Dorian calls me and I'm like, come in here, are you allowed? I go, who? I don't have any, any guests. And I hear his voice in the background. I hear Daniel Larson. In Here's the what I think is happening. I think Daniel Larson is autistic. So people are trying to tell, they think, oh yeah, he's autistic. We can get him in some trouble. Oh, people won't care because he's autistic. Oh, well. Multiple videos were made by all parties denouncing any possibility of a meetup. Michael Quinn threatened Daniel with his security force, and in response, Daniel retaliated with TikToks threatening both Josh and Michael. He went as far as claiming that he would call the National Guard and even made a gun threat. Unfortunately, Daniel's gun threat led to the banning of his TikTok account Daniel Larson NYC. Blaming Michael for his financial woes, the ban on his account, and his overall misfortunes, Daniel's anger towards him escalated, further fueling the drama. Upon hearing about Daniel's plans to travel New York City, fans, and surprisingly even Michael himself, expressed their desire for a meetup between the two personalities. 
On platforms like Reddit and TikTok, many individuals attempted to persuade Daniel to locate Joshua Block and engage in a confrontation. Although neither Daniel nor Joshua seemed interested, their fan bases and Michael Quinn remained invested in the possibility. After Daniel arrived in New York City, trolls attempted to orchestrate an accidental encounter between Daniel and Joshua. They sent Daniel to multiple locations frequented by Joshua, falsely claiming that Grace Vanderwall would be present there. Josh repeatedly expressed on TikTok that he had no interest in meeting Daniel and had to leave establishments when he heard that Daniel might be coming. Following the Bodega incident, Josh uploaded a TikTok video in front of Little India Bodega, the same location where Daniel was assaulted. In the video, Joshua announced that Daniel Larson had been punched in the nose at the Bodega and proudly declared himself the ruler of New York City as World of T-Shirts. I made it in New York? I can make it anywhere. Unlike Daniel, he made it 10 hours and then he got punched in the nose here. He's not a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. I'm the captain of the ship. I run New York. I run the city. Me. Woo! In the aftermath of the Bodega incident, Daniel sported a noticeable cut across his nose, which he often picked at, resulting in frequent bleeding. Fans humorously suggested that Daniel had entered his anti-Semitic arc after he posted two offensive TikTok videos. One featured a song from uh, You Know Who's Perspective, while in the other, Daniel hailed uh, the same guy. Additionally, Daniel claimed in a video that Joshua Block was Jewish. He, he's not Jewish, by the way. This isn't true. Did you know that World of T-Shirts is, is, is a Jew? Well, that explains a lot. I don't like the Jews. On April 11th, Daniel posted several videos on TikTok revealing that he was at the American Dream Mall, as discerned by the background in the footage. The following day, April 12th, Daniel shared a YouTube video stating that he had been asked to leave the mall by 20 troopers who escorted him to a train station. In the same video, he can be seen eating pizza and drinking what appears to be beer. Daniel also requested donations, mentioning his financial difficulties. It became evidence that he did not have enough money to cover his expenses. On May 6, 2023, the Flexburger leaks emerged, involving Flexburger, Daniel's former manager, who leaked several explicit videos of Daniel, as well as an unreleased song. Before delving into the details of the leaked videos, it's important to note that the content is highly sensitive and can be incredibly disturbing and disgusting for many viewers. As a responsible documentarian, I will not be displaying any of the videos and will provide only a brief description, avoiding any unnecessary graphic details. However, it is essential to include these events to provide a comprehensive account of the story. If you prefer to skip the graphic portion of the leaks, please refer to the provided timestamp. Anyways, without further ado, the Flexburger leaks. The pencil incident, which had been rumored for months, was a video of Daniel inserting a pencil into himself while jumping around in a pink room. The video was confirmed to be real after it was uploaded on Reddit on May 6, 2023. Understandably, the comment section was filled with horrified reactions. The shower incident involved a leaked video of Daniel pretending to dry off with a towel, creating the illusion of taking a shower. However, he was already dry in the video, suggesting that he had faked the shower. It was discovered that Daniel had also sent this specific video to someone who appeared to be his mother, Elizabeth Scheimer. The context of the situation remains unclear, whether Daniel did it intentionally or accidentally, or if the recipient was genuinely his mom or another person impersonating her, but it still doesn't make the video any less disgusting. In response to receiving the video, Daniel's mother, or at least who we believe to be Daniel's mother, expressed disappointment and questioned his actions, to which Daniel Daniel replied with a paragraph of run-on sentences, claiming that his phone had been hacked and he had no knowledge of the video. Flexburger also teased the existence of a bottle video on Twitter and hinted at having a goldmine of leaked content, which he released gradually to keep the community entertained. Finally, after a few weeks of anticipation, the bottle video was made public. The nature of the video can be inferred from its title, and it depicted Daniel engaging in explicit behavior with a bottle. You, you already know what I mean. Furthermore, screenshots emerged allegedly showing Flexburger threatening Daniel with the release of his music, kidnapping, and even torture. 
Anyways, that's it for all the disturbing stuff. Uh, back, back to normal leaks. As for the unreleased Daniel song, Flexburger unveiled it during an Ask Me Anything session on the Daniel Larson subreddit. Titled Wild Hearts, the R&B music video lasted 2 minutes and 53 seconds. The quality of the singing indicated that the song was either unfinished or lacked autotune, differing from Daniel's other music. On May 8th, 2023, Daniel and Michael Quinn had their first meeting over lunch. Then, on May 10th, following their initial meeting, Quinn facilitated a long-awaited encounter between Daniel and Joshua Block. The world anxiously waited as Daniel walked through the doors of the Starbucks at the World Financial Center in downtown New York. As he approached the camera, a smile spread across his face, dissipating the tension of the moment. Daniel extended his hand for a handshake, seemingly expressing an apology, while Josh recorded his rendition of Empire State of Mind, with Daniel gleefully waving in the background. New York, concrete jungle where dreams are made of. There's nothing you can't do. Now you're in New York. <laughs> the two creators sat down together, breaking bread and discussing Josh's struggles with alcoholism, Daniel's experiences on the West Coast, and various other topics. Josh live streamed this historic moment, sharing it with their fans and the rest of the world. Even after all of the disgusting shit we've went over already, it's finally nice to see at least something positive come out of this. So, so uh, I'm gonna see you shake hands again. Thanks for the meetup. Thanks so much yeah, for the yeah. meetup. Yeah, you know, it's great. I'm glad I was able to right. watch this. And I think it's you guys good. are gonna be good friends. I think you're gonna make some of the best content since yes. I'm gonna go. Obviously, I'm doing my uh, tours. Yeah. Now, for 50 dollars. Yeah, yeah. Tours are 50. They are. On May 17, 2023, Daniel Larson experienced yet another devastating breakdown triggered by a culmination of distressing factors. With approximately $200 saved up, Daniel embarked on a journey by purchasing a bus ticket bound for Orlando, Florida. His ambitious plan entailed earning income at Disney, followed by a return to Denver to work on a new studio album. However, fate had other plans in store for him as he missed the bus while recording a video of himself sprinting. Holy crap. If I miss this fucking bus ride, I'm gonna be fucking angry. My full fucking, like, five miles to go and get more. This seemingly inconsequential event sparked a domino effect, pushing Daniel into a state of complete emotional collapse. In the midst of this turmoil, Daniel unleashed his frustration by viciously destroying the headphones he had been wearing. He stomped on them with fervor and then hurled them into the depths of the Hudson River. In an erratic frenzy, he created a series of videos on a newly created account, venting his frustrations, shouting, and expressing his disturbing desire to acquire a firearm. I need to find a fucking gun. These videos were later deleted, but their impact lingered. Daniel's distress spilled over onto his primary social media platforms, TikTok and YouTube, where he pleaded for donations, indonated his posts with countless crying emojis, and even pointed fingers at Michael Quinn and World of T-Shirts, blaming them for his predicament. The YouTube community tab became a hotbed of activity, buzzing with Daniel's frantic outpouring. While the missed bus undoubtedly served as the immediate trigger, it is essential to consider other contributing factors that played a part in this explosive emotional response. One plausible explanation lies in Daniel's mental health. 
Being both autistic and bipolar, he faces unique challenges when it comes to processing emotions effectively. Autism often manifests as an impaired ability to navigate emotional experiences, potentially intensifying the impact of this meltdown, where his bipolar disorder likely exacerbated the situation further. Another factor that may have contributed to the breakdown is Daniel's chronic lack of sleep. Homeless and with a precarious living situation, his sleep schedule has been severely disrupted. Sleeping in subway stations or on benches has become his unfortunate reality. Evidence scattered across Daniel's social media reveals his struggle, including posts from the night of the incident indicating he had only managed to rest for a mere two hours. Explosiveness and meltdowns are common symptoms of sleep deprivation, making it highly likely that the lack of sufficient rest played a significant role in the escalation of his meltdown. Even Daniel's aspirations and dreams could have fueled the intensity of this breakdown. Missing the bus represented a significant setback in his pursuit of financial stability and recognition. Daniel had harbored hopes of generating income at Disney, and the bus was meant to be the catalyst for that endeavor. Although the specifics of his plan remain unclear, it is evident that this delay severely impacted his access to a crucial resource to him. Believing in his potential as a renowned singer, Daniel had planned to record a new studio album upon reaching Denver. Despite previous indications of a severed connection with Bob, Daniel disclosed on the 17th that Bob would finance at least two more songs if he managed to secure a record deal. With the bus delaying both aspects of his grand plan, it undoubtedly contributed to the worsening of his emotional state and definitely served as a catalyst for the meltdown. On May 18th, a YouTuber by the name of John Jam began tailing Daniel, purposefully engaging in provocative behavior and taunting him near the One World Trade Center. This relentless trolling intensified Daniel's distress, leaving him highly upset and distraught. The events surrounding Daniel Larson's meltdown paint a complex picture of a vulnerable individual grappling with a multitude of challenges. The interplay between missed opportunities, mental health struggles, sleep deprivation, and external provocations culminated in a catastrophic emotional breakdown that captivated the attention of viewers worldwide. On May 19th, 2023, Daniel Larson took to YouTube and uploaded a series of videos and community posts, urgently appealing for donations to support his journey back to Colorado. In one revealing TikTok video, he expressed the pressing need to reach Denver by Monday, May 22nd, as he had a recording studio session scheduled. Concerns about the consequences of failing to make it back to Colorado by the following day were also voiced by Daniel in the comments section of his YouTube page. However, in a perplexing turn of events, Daniel seemed to abruptly abandon his focus on Colorado and made a startling claim that Justin Bieber had purchased a plane ticket for him to Orlando, Florida. According to Daniel's account, the two were planning to embark on a week-long vacation together at Disney World. Okay. Amidst the whirlwind of updates, Daniel shared a video showcasing the view from a train, providing a glimpse into his journey. He then confirmed twice, with comments posted approximately two hours apart, that he had successfully arrived at JFK Airport. However, an unexpected revelation followed as Daniel candidly admitted to being intoxicated and expressed his intention to remain inebriated during the upcoming plane ride. His excitement grew as he eagerly anticipated the prospect of experiencing Space Mountain in the near future. A post captioned, Who is ready for the explosion further fueled anticipation among his followers, suggesting that things were progressing as planned either in terms of his travels to Orlando or the imminent flight itself. However, just an hour later, the situation took a drastic turn when Daniel left a comment stating, We have a major concern and problem. While his comments briefly reverted to a positive tone as he thanked a fan for a music sale, Daniel swiftly shifted back to a negative mindset, blaming trolls for ruining everything and expressing a sense of frustration over a supposed major issue. He went on to claim that he had been fired and that a significant misunderstanding had occurred. Fueled by anger, he even threatened legal action against anyone who dared to contact the airport he was in. Another hour passed before Daniel announced a fan meetup at the Statue of Liberty, scheduled for 10 p.m. Eastern Time. As expected, however, he failed to show up, leaving his followers disappointed and questioning his reliability. Given that all the information regarding the events of May 19th is derived solely from Daniel Larson's own statements, the accuracy and true sequence of events remains speculative. Consequently, fans have pieced together various narratives and theories in an attempt to make sense of the limited information provided by Daniel. 
One prevailing theory revolves around the notion that Daniel fell victim to deception either by his current management or by an elaborate troll. This theory suggests that Daniel was misled into believing that Justin Bieber had gifted him a plane ticket to Orlando, Florida. Debates persist as to whether Daniel received a counterfeit ticket or if he was never given a ticket at all. Some speculators have even suggested that Daniel was expelled from JFK Airport due to his ill-advised comment about an explosion. However, there is no concrete evidence to support such claims. Nevertheless, many agree that Daniel's remark was foolhardy and could have potentially caused him trouble. Considering that the last ferry to the Statue of Liberty departs at 3.30 p.m., it is widely believed that Daniel would have been unable to reach the iconic landmark as he claimed. Some theorists propose that Daniel mentioned the Statue of Liberty to misdirect people from getting his actual whereabouts, although this theory remains unverified. Finally, on May 20th, 2023, nearly two months into Daniel's extensive travel arc, he managed to secure a plane ride out of New York City. Daniel documented the journey through TikTok slideshows, and coincidentally, Reddit user SCNYC happened to be on the same flight and captured some photos of him. Upon landing in Denver, Colorado, Daniel shared a heartfelt video where he exclaimed, Finally, I'm back home, while blowing a kiss to the camera. Later that night, he posted pictures of drinks, claiming to be enjoying a dinner with Bob at Olive Garden, signifying a reunion and celebration of their renewed friendship. On May 22, 2023, back in his home state of Colorado, Daniel Larson found himself in a tense encounter with individuals who claimed to be a part of his security team. However, Daniel vehemently denied their association and insisted that they leave him alone. This incident unfolded in a rather remarkable fashion as both parties recorded the encounter, providing a unique perspective on the situation. Amidst the heated exchange, Daniel decided to share his side of the story through a series of YouTube videos. In one of the longer videos, he can be seen trying to convince the two individuals that they are not a security team. Despite his efforts, they remained adamant, asserting that they were hired by someone named John Summit and had been paid a substantial sum of $30,000. They even went so far as to make a phone call to John Summit, allowing Daniel to hear his voice. Eventually, upon learning that Daniel was running late for a meeting with his friend Bob, the individuals reluctantly allowed him to leave. Literally, there's two fucking guys walking that go to a goddamn college, okay? I've asked you guys to fucking leave! We're contacting the police! It's illegal to follow somebody around and harass the living fuck out of them. John Summons sent us here. John Summons is the fake. Yes, he is. Send, show, show, me, show me the picture. Show me the picture. Show some candy so everyone knows what I'm saying. John Summit, he sent us. That's so fake, dude. No, that's John Summit. Okay, well, where? Okay, what is your badge number? My badge number? Oh, For security. 01193645. I got you. What, what so company? Just, what company? I just looked John Summit Incorporated. John Summit Incorporated. Okay, and what's your badge number? 52378RL91. Okay, and what's the website? Website johnsummit.com. Johnsummitsecurity.com. Did you call the call? Oh, here, hold on. Call yeah, call. Do you want to talk to John Summit? We're, we're, we're sending out police. All right, John Summit's here to save you, Daniel. If you could please put it on FaceTime, hey, hey, that would be great, you because, yes, please. Well, I can't, because he's an Android. I can't handle it, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Listen, though, this is John Summit. Say hi to John Summit. Uh, hello, this is Daniel. Can I ask why you are sending people to my location? Okay, my management and my record label is asking that you guys do, you guys stop. Holy shit, stop. I'm not gonna lie, bro, you smell like shit. God, bro, oh my okay. god. Okay, we're it's asking that you guys stop, okay? We, my, my management has called out the police. They're on their way. Shit, they will check. They will check to make sure that there is a website and that there is a legal contract that you guys have. Nice. You who hired us, aren't you? You asked for security. That's why John Sun sent us. My bad. My bad. My bad. He's talking to you. I can hear, but I don't have a contract with him at all. Then who made the contract with us? Yeah, we have a contract. We already got paid. I got paid three thirty thousand dollars. So, Send proof. Where, 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 where's your proof? 
the contract? No, I can't right now. I don't have it on me. Okay. It, on it was a paper contract. It was a paper. photo of it? No, I didn't. If you, got, if you guys literally got paid that much money? Yeah, it was 30 grand. 30 grand? Awesome, it's a rich man. Yeah, I, I didn't think you got those. I think I got these. I just bought them. I'm like, 30 grand. Dude, that's like, that's like a $30 pair of pants. It was $85. 85? I mean, okay, but, but still. But still. Say that again? I got paid 30 grand. What do you want me to do? Because I turn the media against you, Daniel. John Summit knows inside info. Listen to him. Listen to him. Daniel. John Summit, he's the one who said this. Here, tell, tell him, tell him, John. Here's the thing that's a lot of money. Here's the thing that's a lot of money. I, listen. I went to New York City and I went to Sony Music Entertainment. I went to their office. I have a contract with them. They're asking that you guys step down. We are also aware of the trolls that are involved, okay? And we are, we are pressing charges on them. We believe that you guys are also trolling because we've asked you guys to stop and you guys won't. Folks, we have to, we have to argue. That's what we're paid for. That's what we get paid to do. It's like my job, you know what I mean? I gotta pay for the kids. Okay, what is it? You have, you have, you have 30 seconds. No, I'm meeting up with Bob. I'm literally late to meet up with him. You have to go meet him right now? Yes. All right, all right, we'll let you go. All right, thank you. Let us know though, if anything happens, okay? John Summit Security, give us one call. I will look you guys up on Google and I will call, okay? Right. But until then, I asked you guys to leave. You. you saw how good we protected you. Don't lie about it. Huh? You were safe. Right, you were safe at all times. But just to let you know, Bob That's will. $30,000. Yes. That's Bob, hold, hold on. Hold on. Stop interrupting me, okay? Bob will literally call the police on you. He's a lot more strict than I am. Tell him to hire us. Oh, yeah. So he works. Know. He actually works with the government. Put in a good word for us. So you don't know John Summit at all? No. He's in contact, like Bob is in contact with the DA's office, the Colorado DA's. No, that is the fucking public defender's office and the pup. Shut up, just get out of here. Holy fuck. I need fucking arm security for goddamn motherfucking shit. I will be pressing charges. Interestingly, the perspective of the so-called security team was also documented and shared on Reddit by user LunchAccomplished817. According to their accounts, the video was obtained from a Discord conversation where it was claimed to have been recorded by a friend of the security team. What's up, Daniel? Well, I'm not allowed to take No, no, they call us. They told us to come here. We're security. I don't I don't have security. Here, I'm, I'm gonna send the, it to I'm them. I'm on the phone with my security right now. No, we have to send it to them, Daniel. I'm on the phone with my security. I, right I'm now. I'm the security. No. Well, do you want me to call the police? Hey, relax. The incident on May 25th, 2023 marked yet another public meltdown for Daniel, which unfolded across multiple stores, originating from an encounter at a haagen ice cream shop where he was ultimately asked to leave. This dramatic episode was captured by some of Daniel's fans and subsequently uploaded to Reddit by user DLarsTV. In one of the videos, a fan can be heard asking about John Summit, the same individual reference in the fake security incident, and inquiring about Daniel's recent showers. Despite Daniel's repeated requests for them to leave and his mention of contacting the police, the fans persisted in recording him. John Summit. The police are on their way. John I'm Summit. Going to need to ask you to Daniel, leave. John Summit told me to ask you if you've showered any time recently. Okay, I'm going to need to ask you guys to leave. You still smell like poo. Hey, don't charge me, Daniel.
So he's leaving the premises. Another video captures Daniel from outside the store as a store employee approaches and questions the fans about filming. Initially, one of the fans claimed that they were security, but upon further questioning, Daniel himself replied with an alarming statement, confessing to being a pedophile. I'm security. No, I'm serious. Why are you taking pictures of this man? Oh. I'm security. He's a Upon learning about Daniel's troubling past, the female employee took it upon herself to remove him from the premises. In response, according to DLARS TV, Daniel retaliated by striking her. This prompted a male employee to intervene, resulting in the subsequent events being recorded on video, which clearly show Daniel being forcefully thrown out of the ice cream shop. Hey! You want to start talking? Bring it! Okay, I'm on the phone! Get out! Get out! Get out. You have a lawyer for your fucking arrest. Oh, 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 As the altercation continued, Daniel's meltdown only intensified, culminating in him uttering racial slurs. His behavior eventually escalated to self-harm and destruction of private property. Hey, Daniel, stop. Daniel, stop. No! Daniel, just get out of the store. Come on. Following these events, Daniel was approached by more fans to whom he shared his accounts of what had happened. We called police, we called security. No one was coming out. So the police literally said, well, we're not coming out because no crime is committed. Huh. So I didn't know what to do. So I literally on public air pretty much, you know, like on the media, literally, because I had to do something, right? To yeah. knock everything down and get everybody to stop. People were following me blocks. I bet. It's still going on. You're the, uh, I want to say in 10 minutes, you're the sixth person that spotted me. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm up there now. Like, I see. I ain't coming down. I see. We are going media silent today. I see. I do not blame you at all. But even if I go media silent, that's not going to help. No. Right? Those red, crazy red. Right. So the issue is I ended up basically because we had two people in the area that mm. yelled, we have guns. I literally screamed, I will murder everybody in this area. You know, if you be saying that shit, man. But here's the thing. What am I supposed to do if somebody says they have a gun? I mean... I had to... You see what I mean? Guess I, had to, I had to protect myself. Yeah. The police we were on the phone with, because mm -hmm. we called my 911. They literally said, there's still no crime committed if the fans stop now. Good. I see. I'm sitting there going like, did I just get the, like, the fact that people are yelling guns and all this stuff, and yet I'm like threatening murder? That's on public media, and yeah. they're saying no crime is committed? What, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, it's not, yeah. Like, it's of that level now that, like, nobody, not even the label, they're, they're the label's just learning my campus. Really? Just now? Just now. And they're not... The next morning, Daniel took to TikTok to address the situation, starting by refuting DLARS TV's claim that he had assaulted the employee. He also expressed how the events of May 25th had deeply affected him, as that day held significant meaning for him due to his grandmother's birthday. Daniel subsequently posted a comprehensive explanation of the video on social media. In his own words, Daniel recounted the events, saying, So, this is why yesterday I said what I said in public. I raised my fist and I knocked over those things in public inside the store. So, those trolls that were videotaping me were trying to get me kicked out of the restaurant for something that I didn't do, okay? They were asking me very, very inappropriate questions. They were also impersonating to be my security when I said I don't have security and I don't know their company, so they need to please leave. They refused to leave. Basically started creating a scene to get 
to where other people in the location started wa watching. It caught the attention of the re restaurant manager. The restaurant manager then got involved, went over, you could see it on video, went over to the trolls that were claiming they were AKA security, which is not true, and asked them to leave me alone. They refused to leave me alone, and they said that I touched children. There's not proof of that. There's never been proof of that. It's all a lie. Okay, so what they did was they got on their phone, they showed this person literally the subreddit, the Daniel Larson subreddit, this manager at this restaurant. The manager believed it, came back in, asked me to leave. When I said why, I didn't do anything. They said that I was a pedophile and that I touched children live, like publicly and to where everybody in the entire location could hear. Okay, at that point of time, there was about 10 cameras from people in the location, 10 cameras on me. I overheard one of the people from the other side of the restaurant say, I have a gun on me. And that is what escalated everything. Okay, because I don't mess around with threats like that. I don't. So... I said, okay, I will leave. Okay, they basically got aggressive. Um, you can't see it very clear, but when I was coming out of the restaurant door, pretty much the front door, when I was leaving, that guy that is in the picture, in the video, pushed me out the door. Okay, my backpack went flying, fell on the ground. Okay, and I overheard, I, you can't really hear it on the video um, because it came from like the other end of the courtyard area, you know, the street. So you can't hear this person, but the same guy, I'm guessing that was inside, was once again outside, claimed he had a gun. And at that point, I started escalating because it was like, you know, it was just a really bad situation that I was blackmailed to be in. I called the police. The police never showed up and they said no crime was committed. So what am I supposed to do if the police don't show up? If they're saying that there's no crime committed and yet I'm being completely blackmailed by these fans these trolls until I get permanently banned for life from these places. It's not okay. Story short, that's what happened. And I panicked and I felt like I had to defend myself. I'm a celebrity and people shouldn't come up to me and try to put hands on me 24 seven. That's what security is for. You know, like, I put up with too much, and that's the hard truth right now, is this needs to, people need to understand now what I'm going through, and what I've been trying to say, and what I've been trying to get heard, that I've been getting called a liar about, because it's not okay. So, I hope this... All these Reddit trolls, everybody from past management, I hope they all get exposed and they get arrested. And I hope my court cases get lifted. Because it's ruined my life. It's ruined my friendship with my family. And it's ruined so much of my life. It pisses me off.
On May 31st, 2023, Daniel Larson took a momentous step towards expanding his online presence and income by venturing into the world of Cameo. The decision was heavily influenced by his devoted fans who had observed the success of other celebrities like World of T-Shirts had achieved on the platform. Eager to seize the opportunity, Daniel excitedly announced the launch of his very own Cameo page on his YouTube community page, generating a wave of anticipation among his loyal followers. The platform, which allowed fans to request personalized video messages from their favorite celebrities in exchange for payment, appeared to hold great potential for Daniel's financial prospects. At first, Daniel priced his Cameo videos at $20.99. However, after carefully assessing the market and gauging the response to his initial videos, he made several adjustments to the pricing. The price increased to $24.99 and then made a significant jump to $59.99, and rumors even circulated that it soared as high as $85. Unfortunately, the higher price points failed to attract a substantial number of buyers, prompting Daniel to reconsider and search for the optimal pricing sweet spot. Despite the roller coaster ride of his cameo pricing, Daniel remained actively engaged with his fans. On June 6, 2023, he attended a Colorado Rockies baseball game, eager to share the experience with his followers through a series of YouTube videos, shorts, and TikTok clips. Throughout the event, Daniel took great delight in documenting his interactions with fans he had encountered at the game. However, it was an unfortunate day for the Rockies as they suffered a disappointing 10-4 defeat against the Giants. As Daniel's cameo page gained traction and his popularity soared, he continued to fine-tune his pricing strategy. On June 16, 2023, a Reddit user by the name of u slash TMZ underscore news posted a video allegedly sourced from Grace Vanderwall's Instagram account. The video, created through the use of AI, featured a fake Grace vehemently urging Daniel to leave her and her family alone, adamantly asserting that Daniel had never been in contact with any member of the Vanderwall family. This is a message to Daniel Larson. Please leave me and my family alone. You are not in contact with me and have never been. Daniel addressed this unsettling video on the community section of his YouTube page, revealing his panicked reaction and unintentionally falling prey to the elaborate prank. In response, he swiftly raised the minimum price of his cameo videos to $50, citing the need to filter out nonsensical requests. However, just two days later, on June 18th, Daniel made a drastic leap by increasing the price to a staggering $500 for a personal cameo. In a clarifying statement posted on his YouTube community page, he cited legal concerns and the ongoing situation as factors influencing his decision. With an additional booking fee of $99, the total cost for a cameo skyrocketed to nearly $600. Surprisingly, Daniel's experimentation with pricing did not end there. He further raised the price to $830 on the same day, then to $1,069 before eventually settling at around $900. The fluctuating prices continued until June 19th when Daniel ultimately reduced the cost back to $50, only to increase it once more to $100 shortly after. Despite these price adjustments, the number of reviews for his cameo videos remained relatively stagnant at 42, although it remains uncertain whether each purchase resulted in a review. Despite the ambiguity surrounding the exact revenue generated from his cameo venture, Daniel managed to amass a significant amount of money. With 42 reviews taken into account and conservative estimations of $30 per purchase, it can be inferred that Daniel earned a minimum of $1,260 from video sales alone. Taking into consideration additional revenue from $3 messages and the likelihood of unreviewed purchases, his overall cameo sales likely exceeded $1.3,000. Despite efforts by certain individuals, including Flexburger, to have Daniel banned from Cameo by reporting alleged violations of the platform's terms of service, Cameo confirmed that he had not breached any guidelines, thus ensuring his continued presence and the maintenance of his income stream on the platform. With the influx of funds, Daniel began to adjust his online behavior. He gradually reduced his promotion of his cash app on YouTube and TikTok, signaling a newfound financial stability. As a result, he indulged in small luxuries such as quesadillas, alcoholic drinks, and beer, enjoying the fruits of his success. Why he doesn't use any of this money for more important things like, I don't know, finding a place to stay? I don't know. I don't fucking know, dude. As the availability of money fluctuated, Daniel adapted his approach to receiving donations. Instead of actively promoting his cash app, he started redirecting fans to his cameo page, demonstrating a shift in his financial expectations. 
By June 20th, 2023, Daniel seldom shared his Cash App information, suggesting a greater reliance on Cameo as his primary source of financial support. While it remains unclear whether Daniel had any direct contact with Grace, on June 21st, 2023, the aforementioned u slash TMZ underscore news allegedly reached out to Grace to inquire about her knowledge of Daniel and whether she had ever been in contact with him. In response, Grace emphatically stated that she had never contacted him and expressed her intense disdain, urging him to cease mentioning her. Her vehement feelings towards Daniel were not surprising given his well-documented inappropriate behavior towards her, particularly considering he developed a sexual attraction towards her when he was well into his 20s and she was only 16 to 17 years old. Furthermore, Daniel's relentless harassment of Grace and her family, inciting online harassment every time he commented on any of her posts, only intensified her animosity towards him. There's a strong possibility that even if Daniel were to encounter these messages, he would refuse to acknowledge them and instead attribute them to trolls, his past management, or use individuals from his past as scapegoats for Grace's undeniable hatred towards him. Due to his delusions, he would continue to believe that Grace harbored affection for him, dismissing any evidence to the contrary. It is well within Grace's rights to harbor such animosity towards Daniel, considering the extent of his obsession with her, his disturbing actions, and the behavior exhibited by those who follow his antics. Regardless of one's stance on Daniel, spamming Grace and her family members with comments about him is unacceptable behavior. Grace and her family have done nothing to deserve this unwarranted attention and are simply victims of circumstance. And I'm sure Grace wholeheartedly shares this sentiment. TMZ underscore news responded to Grace with their condolences towards her and her family, offering to cease messaging her about Daniel, showcasing a level of maturity that many other trolls failed to demonstrate, likely due to their emotional immaturity. However, it's important to acknowledge that there is a significant possibility that these messages were falsified. It is highly unlikely that a genuine celebrity would engage in a conversation with a random stranger, proclaiming them to be a nice guy after just two direct messages, especially considering Grace's history of ignoring people who discuss Daniel on her platforms. Until further evidence emerges, it's crucial to approach these messages with skepticism, recognizing the potential for an elaborate hoax or an alleged fabrication. Nonetheless, the overarching fact remains unchanged. Grace and her family vehemently desire no connection with Daniel, neither presently nor in the future. And as always, regardless of how close Daniel comes to accepting the reality of Grace's hatred towards him and her family's wish to sever ties, he will continue to delude himself into believing that Grace loves him, dismissing anyone who contradicts his distorted perception. On July 9th, 2023, Daniel made a significant decision that would send shockwaves throughout the online community. He adopted a dog named Music from the Longmont Humane Society in Longmont, Colorado. However, the news of Music's adoption by Daniel sparked a wave of outrage on the subreddit. Many users vehemently voiced their concerns about Daniel's ability to take care of himself, let alone an animal, given his financial struggles, violent tendencies, and history of damaging property during meltdowns. It was evident that Daniel was ill-suited to be a responsible pet owner, and the subreddit members demanded that Music be returned to the shelter for her own safety. The outcry grew so intense that the Longmont Humane Society felt compelled to issue a public statement addressing the situation. In their statement, they acknowledged the concerns raised by the community and assured the public that they were taking the matter seriously. They stated that they were collaborating with local law enforcement to investigate the allegations of falsified records and the well-being of music. The organization also expressed a commitment to reviewing and improving their screening processes for potential adopters. Their primary focus was ensuring the welfare of all animals under their care, and they encouraged anyone with relevant information to come forward and share it. It was clear to everyone, except Daniel, that he was utterly unfit to take care of a dog. During the short period that Music spent with him, Daniel demonstrated time and time again why he was ill-equipped to provide proper care and could not be trusted around animals. Daniel's reasons for adopting Music were questionable, to say the least. He claimed that he wanted her to be a guard dog, apparently under the delusion that she possessed specialized training to protect him. A. She's a, she's a German Shepherd. It's her job. 
She, she's, like I said, she's got the guard doggish attitude. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I got him to be a guard dog. That's why I got him. Adding to the concern was the fact that Daniel frequently misgendered music, often referring to her as a male. This lack of awareness about the dog's gender raised doubts about Daniel's ability to even meet music's basic needs, let alone provide proper medical care if required. Additionally, the only water Daniel provided for music came in the form of small cups from fast food chains like Starbucks and McDonald's, which was grossly insufficient for a dog, especially one as large as music. In terms of food, Daniel's efforts were equally inadequate. He claimed to have a bag of dry food for music, likely provided by the Longmont Humane Society. However, according to Daniel, music refused to eat. This refusal to eat was often a sign of stress in dogs. Furthermore, in the videos Daniel uploaded featuring music, the dog can be seen whimpering audibly with her ears pinned back, indicating anxiety and distress. The only food Daniel claimed to have given music was a puppuccino, which is a small cup of whipped cream. This raised serious concerns about Daniel's ability to meet music's nutritional needs and ensure her overall well-being. In a YouTube comment, Daniel even mentioned considering giving music nachos, which is a really dangerous choice as certain ingredients in nachos, such as jalapenos and onions, are incredibly toxic and sometimes fatal to dogs. Daniel's actions and comments made it clear that he posed a significant threat to music's health and safety. The community's outcry caught the attention of Ox, who took it upon himself to rescue music. Ox made a post requesting Daniel's location so that he could intervene and save the dog. He expressed his intention to travel to Colorado by motorcycle, demonstrating his commitment to ensuring music's safety. Ox's dedication resonated with the community and they eagerly awaited updates on his mission. On July 10th, Ox posted that he had arrived in Colorado and was actively searching for Daniel. However, despite his best efforts, Ox was unable to locate Daniel in music. Disappointed but undeterred, Ox decided to call off his search and return to Los Angeles, expressing his hope that someone in Denver would confront Daniel and help secure Music's return to safety. Shortly after Ox's departure, another Reddit user named Keanu Reeves with the gun expressed their determination to continue the rescue mission. They resided close to Longmont and pledged to find Daniel in Music. On July 10th, YouTuber Goaded Minds, also known as Goaded Piston on Reddit, uploaded a video titled, Daniel Larson Got a Dog, We Need to Save It. In the video, he revealed that he had reached out to Animal Control and the Longmont Humane Society, taking action to ensure Music's rescue. Additionally, Goaded Minds announced a $100 reward for anyone who could successfully retrieve Music from Daniel's possession. Meanwhile, a Discord group named SEAL Team 6 was formed, led by Goaded Minds and including other members like Ween. Their mission was to track down and save music. Over the course of two days, they meticulously located and pinpointed Daniel's whereabouts. Their efforts led them to the bridge featured in one of Daniel's previous music videos and eventually to the park where he had spent the previous night. The team's determination paid off when Ween successfully rescued music from Daniel's custody. Ween approached Daniel under the pretense of checking on the dog's well-being, swiftly took custody of Music, and placed her safely in her car. Goaded Minds posted an image of Music on Reddit, accompanied by the caption, Music is safe, providing visual proof of the dog's rescue. In response to requests for additional evidence, Goaded Minds later shared a video featuring Music. Ween also posted updates on Reddit, reassuring everyone that Music was doing well and expressing gratitude for the support received. While Music was safely on her way back to the Longmont Humane Society with one of the animal caretakers, Daniel resumed activity on his YouTube community page. He claimed to have just been released from police custody and mentioned facing new criminal charges. He desperately sought the community's help in retrieving the dog, implicating World of T-shirts into the dog napping situation. In a state of distress, Daniel recounted his experiences, often repeating fragmented details in a convoluted and disordered manner, making it challenging to decipher the chronology of events. 
In the midst of this tumultuous period, Daniel engaged in a call with Goaded Minds, who recorded the conversation and later uploaded it to YouTube. The recording provided insights into Daniel's erratic behavior and his incoherent ramblings about the events that had transpired. It became clear that Daniel had thrown a fit, causing a destruction inside of a Walmart, leading to his apprehension by security guards and even a motorcyclist who restrained him. Daniel did not come out of the situation unharmed as he had a very visible injury on his eye, likely as a result of self-harm. Throughout the evening, Daniel continued to upload videos addressing the ongoing situation. In one video, he threatened Bob, demanding that he create a social media account and publicly deny any allegations against Daniel. Okay, I ain't fucking lying about shit. Bob, I need you to go live right now. I need you to make a social media account and put it out there right fucking now that I am not lying or I will kill you as well. My life is in danger right now. In another video, Daniel expressed his intention to take the matter to the Supreme Court, lamenting that security companies refused to believe his claims. His distress was palpable as he made repeated calls to emergency services, including one in which he falsely claimed to have a bomb. It was evident that Daniel's mental state was deteriorating rapidly. My entire family is in danger, and no one believes what we are saying. My entire family is now famous. All of our houses have been doxxed. We are homeless and my fans are doxxing, getting criminal charges on us that are all false. We will take this all the way to fucking Supreme Court. We are not playing around. We have contacted security companies and they've all refused to work with us because they don't believe what we are saying about our popularity. I am done and I will not stop until the White House is blown up. Okay, so I just called 911 and I just literally just screamed I have a bomb on the 911 number and randomly hung up in hopes to get this situation heard and to get my family the rights that they deserve and the security and protection. I'm sick and tired of fans assaulting, harassing, beating up my family, injuring people, stealing dogs, doxing, and stealing money, fraudulent shit, blaming it on me and my family, and then to make everything worse, say that it's my fault. I'm done, I'm sick and tired of this, and I will, like I said, take it all the way until this gets hurt. And if charges will be pressed, I will sue the entire US government and Supreme Court. So I just called 911 again, um, trying to still get security services or something since I'm being spotted by fans on almost every single corner and I'm being followed and I got attacked earlier today and the issues that have been going on um, that people are posting to social media, I'm sick and tired of people saying is fake because it's really happening. So it's not virtual reality, it's not bullshit, it's really actually happening and it's serious. I just called 911 for a second time in under an hour and they still don't believe what I'm saying. This is bullshit for Colorado and I'm about to literally try to take this to Supreme Court or it's going to go down at the fucking hospital because I am done. Daniel's last content for the night was a YouTube live stream where he filmed himself interacting with emergency medical technicians. That's so bright. I, I am a singer-songwriter of Denver, Colorado, currently homeless, and I am known by most police officers, most hospitals, most people, I should say. And I'm getting spotted on almost every single street corner okay. by fans, by supporters. 
and I, the last couple of days, have been, like, actually attacked, threatened, and I have nowhere to go because I'm homeless. And I have called security companies. They are all refusing to work with me until I get housing. So I'm in even more danger being on the street, homeless, without security. And I'm starting to fear for my life. Yes, I'm in Golden, Colorado. It is the, I want to say 11th or 12th. Or like, yeah. Okay. Uh, Joe Biden. Okay, six quarters. That is going to be a dollar and a half. So you're not feeling safe, you're saying? I'm not feeling safe. Because this is. Other folks or because of yourself? Just because of my popularity, I like. I've tried getting motel rooms, and fans call the motel rooms and dox them, pretty much, and dox my room and. It's becoming super unsafe. And so I have been told not to go to motel rooms without security present. It, it's, just, it's just getting very unsafe for me to be in public, uh, like motels themselves, because they end up banning me because they get spam calls by fans because I'm so popular that like I legitimately I get spotted at the motels by other people there. Like that's how popular I am. Yes, it's Larson, yes. 11 15 1998. I am not doing well. I am famous and I have called multiple times before for popularity issues and people doxing me. This is not the first time I've called in. Yeah, this is not the first time that I've called in for issues. I am homeless and I am trying to get security services, but they all don't want to work with me until I get housing, which makes sense. Yes. But I am, yes, this was from earlier. I've already went to the hospital earlier today and got that taken care of. Well, I tell you what, we've got some good news for you. We've got an ambulance right here ready to take you wherever you need to go. So if you want to talk to these gentlemen here, they sure. Right? Hey, what's going on, Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm Jason. Hi, Brad. nice to meet you. What's going on today? And just so. We, let's yeah. get in the ambulance. Can I go in the ambulance? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, you guys can search me down. You guys can do whatever. I don't. I don't. I don't care. Just put the backpack behind you. Hold I don't. Yeah, you can right. pat me down. Yeah. Have you got any needles? Any guns? Bazookas? Anything no. like that? I need to worry, worry no. about. Okay. Fantastic. I appreciate you checking. Let's go to bring your hands together. Thank you. Not under arrest. This is just how it happened. Okay. That's understandable. I've done this before. I know. All right. Perfect. That's just my debit card. Debit card? Yeah. Much appreciate it. Thank you. Come on up here, Daniel. Do you mind if I just, if I film for like this evidence, one. just in case I take this to like court if need be for like. Okay. Last first step is get your ass bill. We're going to get, we'll, we'll get you into, you know, and I mean, it sounds bad, but they're going to do a psychological evaluation to see what about. But once we get that accomplished, then they can get you in touch with hospital services and hospitalists that can get you in touch with some of those resources that it's it, It's to a point to where, like, yeah, it's almost like have to, not in a negative way, but it's like I have to almost threaten my entire fan base if they get too wild. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how to say it in a way that's not going to sound either crazy, but you know what I mean? I'm like, not crazy. It's, it's, a, it's a very tough situation. I, like, like I said, sometimes I just have to be the power over everyone else in the situation I'm in. Yeah, and no I have no choice. Sorry. Were you over at the School of Mind campus last week sometime? I, yeah, I, I was. Was there, was there an incident with some with some damage on a wall or an elevator or something? Yes, I there was a issue with another person that escalated and it caused like a fan altercation okay. and it ended in like kind of assault towards me and- Is that what happened to you? Uh, not, this is from a different issue, um, but that's what happened last week and, or yeah, it was last week. Well, well, what kind of damage was it? It was, the wall. Just, the wall yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just got messed up. Yeah, and what I did um, is after the fan left, after 
like kind of just punching me one time yeah. and then verbally assaulting me. Yeah. I called 911 then. I called the crisis center. Okay. Both of them they didn't believe me. Okay. They kind of, you know, like I was saying, kind of a kind of point to where I'm just going in circles. And what I did was I just said, you know what, I'm done. I called family and I said, you know what, I'm sick and tired of this. I will take this as far at this point as I need it to together. Yeah. Would, you, would, would you be okay? There's a school of mines, um, uh, lady coming. Would you be able to tell him that story for me? Yes. Just explain that you yes. had an altercation. That's how the law got the image. Right. All right, we got somebody here who just wants to ask you a few questions. Hey, Daniel, I'm Officer William Lines Media. Hi. Again. Well, I contact me today to ask you about some damage that was done to one of our walls. Yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Can you tell me what happened? So, I was about last week, I got dropped off by a friend in the parking lot, the parking garage, okay. and was walking through the building on where the stairwell is. Okay. And um, I'm a singer songwriter. Um, I already kind of talked to them about everything, give them, gave yeah, them. Yeah, I've seen your YouTube. Yes. So I got spotted by a troll, and you know, like a fan, but on purpose trying to cause issues. Okay. And that's been happening a lot lately. And said some verbal stuff, tried to assault me, and I freaked out. I called the crisis line. They didn't believe me. Um, when uh, I talked to them, they thought he was crazy. No. Because some people are still not believing my popularity, which I'm trying to get heard right now. I'm like saying this is serious. Enough is enough. Right. And I panicked and I freaked out. And I decided I was going to kick the ball. So you and so, yes, and so that was me. And I did that out of fear. And the, I, at the time, my what I was thinking in my mind was like, I really don't care right now what happens because I've had enough with the trolling. I've had enough with what is going on. I care more about my safety and I care more about like me, my me. family's safety. Right. And I want to get this heard. And I, that was my motive. I knew I was going to get caught. Okay. Um, I knew the consequences. Um, I'm sorry, and I, if you want to charge me, that's okay, I don't care, um, but I'm trying to, at this point, just do anything I can right now to just put the message out, like, look, this is real stuff that's going on, not a joke anymore, these fans are trolling too much, it's everywhere I go, not just one location, and people are not believing me. So and you weren't in the room with the fans? It was, it was in the, you know when you go through the door and then the stairwell's on the right? Was there anything in the room that you were in? Was it, like it was right in the stairwell is where the fan altercation was. And I went upstairs and then I went out and then I walked. Oh, yeah, so, so this area right here? Yes, yeah, so I, when I came in the door, right from outside. Yeah. I went into the stairwell at the top, there, um, right um, over here. Yep, that's yep. where the fan altercation was okay, okay. because somebody came in through the elevator. Gotcha. Okay. So somebody came in through the elevator, the fan altercation happened in the stairwell. They continued to go down after. I came back up about half a flight of stairs, uh -huh. back into here, and I was just like, dude, what am I going to do? No, I'm tired of this happening people need to understand like I'm really getting spotted everywhere I go people are trolling I need to get to a point to where I am safe from these altercations so you kind of freaked out and, and I freaked out going like I'm I need to get this heard I freaked out and I kicked all okay. so I mean I understand and you know I just wanted to see what what's the deal with the wall all right, so I'll I'll write you a ticket for the criminal mission, but I'm gonna let each of them help you, right? Because right. it's more and important I, right now. So I'll ask them where they're going, and then I I'll just meet you up there. Okay? Yeah, and I will, will also. Okay. So I'll I will you a also, ticket. It's like a five hundred dollar damage thing, right? And yeah. So you know, I can understand freaking out because of the fans and all. Are that Are you? Stuff. Does your body cam record uh -huh. as well? Okay. Can you also help um, with trying to get that 
get this issue as well out there any way you can? Or? I can't get it out anywhere. It just goes to a report. Okay. Can, can, can you help like put like that into a report and say that like this is like a real issue? Yeah. And that like my I am starting to fear for my my life okay. to some degree. And like earlier today, I literally had to make videos going like, I will t I will do anything to where this will go to Supreme Court if it has to, and I will do something if I have to to get it to Supreme Court. <laughs> like that is not good if I have to do something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of that severity of a level. The exact nature of his criminal charges remain unknown. In the midst of these dramatic events, it became increasingly apparent that Daniel's situation was spiraling out of control. The uncertainty surrounding his future loomed, raising questions about potential arrests, imprisonment, or involuntary psychiatric commitments. The cycle of mayhem, madness, and destruction that defines the Daniel Larson story seems to persist unabated. As the dust settles, the next steps remain uncertain, leaving everyone to speculate about what awaits Daniel in the days to come. When I first made the Daniel Larson documentary, I had honestly hoped that that would be it. I'd honestly hoped that after once again losing his phone, getting arrested, and being hospitalized, that Daniel would remain offline for a good amount of time for the betterment of himself and seemingly everyone who has ever crossed paths with him. Although it seems strange and, in a way, almost outright cruel to wish for the complete and total disappearance of a human being from the public eye, you just don't get stories like Daniel Larson. He's one of a kind, a person whose story is so nuanced, complex, and ever-evolving that it's totally valid to sympathize with the tragedy of Daniel's situation, as well as to hate him for his pedophilic and predatorial nature, his failure and seeming unwillingness to at least try to get his life back together, and his increasingly common displays of rage, bigotry, degeneracy, and violence. Although things have changed drastically for Daniel during the time I've been letting my video cook, he is still fundamentally the same horrible person. I feel like we are at a point in the Larsenverse where it is becoming increasingly easy to predict Daniel's future. You'd think that after his numerous disappearances, hiatuses, and meltdowns in Las Vegas, Daniel would have at least come out of that hospital with a slightly different game plan. But of course, this is Daniel who we're talking about. The person who willingly became homeless in an effort to pursue fame. The person who willingly traveled across the entire country by bus over the span of multiple months in an effort to pursue a non-existent fictional romantic relationship with a girl who is terrified of him. The person who screams racial slurs at people in the name of quote-unquote self-defense after being caught trespassing on private property. The person whose time after time again let fake managers and trolls essentially completely manipulate his life, all while acknowledging that they were never real and that they never will be. The person who lied about his own personal information to an adoption agency so he could buy a quote-unquote guard dog that wouldn't have had reliable access to food or water and would likely have been subject to who knows what type of abuse. I said in my last video about Sammy Classic Sonic fan that the hallmark of a lol cow is their complete and total inability to learn from their past mistakes. Sammy recognized almost right away the detrimental impacts that social media was having on his mental health, and did the right thing by taking a much needed break. And when he came back, he rebranded, making his content more relatable, and shifting his persona from the content that made him a lol cow into one of a more mature, intelligent, and socially grown person. The thing is with Daniel is that he falls directly into this trope of never learning from his past mistakes. Early on from his childhood, the signs were there that the cause behind Daniel's behavior was or is likely rooted from the adult figures in his life enabling it. Glimpses of his early life from when he would paint on the walls of his grandma's home and be rewarded with M&Ms for it, all the way to when he would allegedly physically abuse his parents, can be seen in his current behavior. 
When Daniel is given money and donations to his Cameo or Cash App, he views it as a reward. A reward for his online presence, the one singular thing that, to him, validates and represents his entire existence. But to understand the problem with this, we have to understand that Daniel's online presence is the very reason he turned into such a monster. His online presence to everyone except him is defined by his disgusting interactions with underage girls, his violent outbursts and tendencies, and his freakishly demented appearance. Nobody takes him seriously. And although he may not think so on the surface, to Daniel, deep down, all publicity is good publicity. No matter what he does, as long as it gets attention, he will be rewarded for it. He does what he does because he thinks that whatever gets him the most attention is what will get him a bigger reward. Except, any normal person knows that that isn't how it fucking works. Daniel's erratic public meltdowns are the reason he hasn't lived in a home since last year. They're the reason he will likely die on the streets. Sure, he may be making a little bit more money now due to Cameo, but what does Daniel Larson spend his money on? Surely not his unpaid hospital bills from his countless visits due to his rapidly declining health. Surely not medication to treat his mental illnesses or products to treat his skin condition while living on the streets. Just like last time, Daniel prefers to waste all of his money that could be going towards things that would ultimately benefit his life on stuff like stocks, baseball games, concerts, and fancy meals at expensive restaurants. So, what's the consensus? Too much has changed, and at the same time, weirdly enough, not enough has changed. Many would argue it's way past too late for Daniel to get back up on his feet, start making wiser investments, and look for housing again. And unfortunately, I tend to agree. Daniel Larson's situation has changed, but not for the better. And that's why Daniel, as a person, will never change. The last time I ended the video off with the sentiment that Daniel's future was uncertain and that there was no real way for us to really see where his story would go next. Would he be arrested again? Imprisoned? Killed? Well now, I can say that this isn't the last we'll be seeing of Daniel Larson, because at this point, his plot armor is too thick for him to be at risk of permanently disappearing anytime soon. No matter how many more week or month-long hiatuses, Daniel Larson and his antics will forever and always remain documented on the internet. And it shows that his ever-evolving story isn't going to stop, at least not for a while. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next installment, if that day ever comes.